Turn around and let's stand for the bride.
welcome you today to the celebration of Mark and Brenda's wedding. Uh, it's a day that we have prayed for, anticipated, and uh, really rooted for. And so today we celebrate. And they just want to hurry up and get this over with. <laughs> They're ready to do this thing. It's a great feeling to be chosen, isn't it? To have somebody say, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. And uh, you're choosing each other today. It's going to be a wonderful time. Uh, we're going to, uh, you're going to have uh, vows that you will commit to God and to, to one another. And uh, we'll have a unity ceremony and there'll be some wonderful songs. This isn't just a celebration. This is a, could I say this is a worship service? Because we're saying thanks to God. Uh, we're giving gratitude to God uh, for what he has done to bring um, restoration and healing and to bring this couple together. And so we want to worship God today. And so let's begin by asking Pastor Tim to come and, and say a blessing over your marriage. Okay. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this moment that draws us into this place today as we celebrate the love that you have placed in the hearts of these two individuals for each other. We've watched as they have walked through the valleys at times, at times when joy was absent and now today we celebrate the fact that you have started a brand new chapter in their lives we think about your presence here today and we're reminded of the power that was demonstrated for the first time publicly was at a wedding and we think of the power that you have exhibited in their lives how you have brought them to a place of hope and joy and happiness again. And so our prayer this day is that you would bind their hearts together, that you would bless this occasion as it is a memorial to the love that they have for each other and the way you have walked them through the valleys of life. And so, Father, we give you thanks for this occasion. We thank you that we are surrounded by family and friends that love them dearly, that have prayed for them more than any other, and now come to rejoice together in the good things that you have done. And so we say thank you, and we celebrate in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 One of the great uh, components to any sporting event are the fans, right? Uh, they may be on the sidelines, or they may be way up in the uh, in the stands. They may be at, at home watching through a TV screaming and, and yelling and all of that kind of stuff, but the, the fans are important. Uh, they're the ones that are cheering on the team. They're the ones that are saying, they're pulling for their team, right? You've heard that saying. We're pulling for you. We're up on this platform and all behind you, take a look, just turn around real quick. These are your fans. These are the people who have been pulling for you and been longing to, to see something like this happen, for God to restore you and, uh, and so it's with great celebration today that we come together and we give God thanks for what he's going to do. Uh, you have some things in common with a man in the Old Testament by the name of Job, right? You probably felt some of Job's struggles. Job lost everything. And uh, in the midst of that, there was times he wanted to give up and uh, didn't want to go on. Uh, and he had three friends that showed up. Now, we, we give the friends a really bad, bad rap sometimes because they gave some really bad advice. You probably had some friends give you some bad advice, I'm sure. And, and I've probably given you some bad advice. But, but today I hope to give you some good advice. And, and Job, the one thing about those three friends is they never left him. From the time that he had his struggle to the very end, the last chapter of Job, they are still there. They're cheering him on. They're mourning with him and grieving with him. And in uh, Job 42.10 it says this. After Job prayed for his friends... The Lord blessed him twice as much as he had before. And we see restoration there. We see that being faithful with, to God through all that time has paid off. But what I don't want you to miss are the seven words before he blessed him. There was a prerequisite to the blessing. These are it. After Job prayed for his friends. So his friends were there for him all that time. And now, before his blessings were returned, then Job had to pray for his friends. He had to give back. And so, Mark, I want to ask you today to pray for your fans, to pray for your cheerleaders, 
And uh, I know you're praying on behalf of Brenda as well, but I'm going to give you a microphone right back here. And uh, if you just take a moment to pray for those who've been rooting you on and cheering for you. Father God, I just want to give you praise today. All honor and glory goes to you. I pray for my friends, my special friends that are here today with me, my family. I especially pray for me and Brenda as we start our new life together. You will always be the head of our household. Pray for Daryl. Pray for Tim. I pray for the music today. I just want to give you thanks to get today, God, for what you've done in our lives, how you've loved us, how you've taken care of us, how you brought us to this point in our life. And it's only through Jesus that we can pray this prayer. Mm-hmm. And we thank you today, Father. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mark. Thank you. You also have a lot in common with Paul, the Apostle Paul, who was speaking to the church in Corinth. And he says this, We do not want you to be uninformed about the hardships that we've suffered. We were under great pressure far beyond our ability to endure. Now, you may have some folks here, some friends who are in this situation right now. You're, you're fortunately on the other side of this, but so let me start all over again. Maybe this is for those of you out here. We do not want you to be uninformed about the hardships that we've suffered. We are under great pressure far beyond our ability to endure so that we despaired even of life. Indeed, our hearts felt the sentence of death. Been there. And then it says this, but this happened, just three words, everybody say that with me, but this happened, this happened, that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God. That just kind of throws out the window, this idea that God doesn't give us more than we can handle, right? He certainly gives us more than we can handle, so that we can rely on Him, to trust in Him. So this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who, who raises the dead and has, and has delivered us and will deliver us. On him we have set our hope and continue to deliver, that he will continue to deliver us and help us as you help us by your prayers. He continues on, and I want, to, I want to read the rest of this in the message translation. This is where you two fit in. I told you after you uh, asked me if I'd perform your wedding, I said, the Lord's already given me a scripture. This was it. He comes alongside us when we go through hard times. And before you know it, he brings us alongside of someone else who is going through hard times so that we can be there for that person just as God was there for us. Isn't that you? He comes alongside of us when we go through hard times. And before you know it, he brings us along someone else who's going through hard times so that we can be there for that person just as he was there for us. And so we celebrate today that God has brought you together and is making you one, and that this would be a lifetime commitment as we make that covenant together. So, Mark, you need to make a couple of commitments. I have some questions for you, okay? And uh, think hard before you say, I do. Mark, will you take Brenda to be your wife, to honor her and to love her and to respect her all the days of your life, and will you be faithful to her always? If so, answer, I do. And Brenda, will you take Mark to be your wedded husband, Will you honor him and love him and respect him all the days of his life and be faithful to him always? If so, answer, I do. Amen. Good. And who gives this woman to be married to this man? Yes, good. All right. You shatter like you've never been before The life you knew In a thousand pieces on the floor 
And words fall short in times like these When this world drives you to your knees You think you're never gonna get back To the you that used to be Tell your heart to beat again Close your eyes and breathe it in Let the shadows fall away Step into the light of grace Yesterday's a closing door You don't live there anymore Say goodbye to where you've been Tell your heart to beat again Beginning, and just let that word wash over you. It's all right now. Love's healing hands have pulled you through. So get back up, take step one, and leave the darkness, feel the sun. Cause your story's far from over, and your journey's just begun. Tell your heart to beat again Close your eyes and breathe it in Let the shadows fall away Step into the light of grace Yesterday's a closing door And you don't live there anymore Say goodbye to where you've been And let your heart to beat Everything for your good Tell your heart to beat again Close your eyes and breathe it in Let the shadows fall away Step into the light of grace Yesterday's a closing door You don't live there anymore Say goodbye to where you've been Tell your heart to beat again Your heart to beat again Tell your heart to beat Mark, if you'll look into the eyes of your bride and repeat after me. I, Mark, take you, Brenda, to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish until death separates us. Brenda, repeat after me. I, Brenda, take you, Mark, to be my wedded husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For rich or for poor. In sickness or in health. To love and to cherish. Until death separates us. have some rings here today that you're going to exchange and these rings symbolize eternity they have neither beginning nor ending and uh, I want to encourage you to wear them all the time I know with uh, your work maybe that's a problem but um, it says to other people that you're taken and uh, for on to onlookers it says don't even think about it okay I've got somebody at home who's waiting for me and uh, he or she is the love of my life, and so I'm committed to him or her. And so uh, wear those proudly, 
And Marge, just take her ring, if you would, and place this on her finger as you repeat after me. This wedding ring, I give you as a pledge of my love and faith. May it be a constant reminder of the vows we make today. With this ring, I marry you and join my heart to yours. Okay. And Brenda, will you repeat after me? I give you this ring as a pledge of my love and faith. May it be a constant reminder of the vows we make today. With this ring, I marry you and join my heart to yours. Yeah, good. This time, uh, your family is going to come and have a, be part of a unity celebration that Pastor Tim is going to walk you through. And, and this sand will uh, symbolize all their lives coming together, and they'll put this in a prominent place in their home, and uh, it'll be a kind of a private time for them right now, but uh, we're going to let Pastor Tim lead you in that now.
it changes what we see and what we see when you come in the room when you do what only you can do it changes us it changes what we see and what we see For as much as Mark and Brenda have pledged their love each to the other and have exchanged rings of union before all of you, I now pronounce them husband and wife. You may kiss your bride. Let me be the first to congratulate you and the first to shake your hand as husband and wife. We celebrate with you today, and we wish God's blessing on you. God bless you. If you give her her flowers, let me present to you for the first time right now, Mr. and Mrs. Mark Gibbs. Would you celebrate with them, please? <laughs> to celebrate. Mark and, Mark and Brenda want to thank you for being here on this very special day to be a part of this um, incredible service as they renewed or uh, gave their vows one to another and renewed their faith in Christ. And so now they want to invite you to come and join them in a time of celebration. We'll have a reception back in the connector and I'm really anxious to see 300 people in the connector. So uh, we just want to we just want to invite you back there, and they'll be there to greet you. And again, thank you for being here today. Lord bless you. You are dismissed. Your